Okay, in this video I'd like to uh, go over how to graph rational functions with asymptotes. Um, I know a lot of you are working on the unit three, or I'm sorry, part three of unit one on Khan Academy and uh, there's a discussion of asymptotes. Uh, so here we've got a chart that summarizes when you will encounter asymptotes on rational functions. And there are really just two or three scenarios in which you will encounter them. So in the first case, uh, we will encounter vertical asymptotes vertical asymptotes um, when there is a zero in the denominator. And I'm going to make a caveat here. Uh, this is a factored denominator. So after you've factored and simplified a polynomial divided by another polynomial, uh, if there is still a zero that can be found in the denominator, that's where a vertical asymptote will occur. Uh, there will be horizontal asymptotes at uh, the uh, x-axis or at the equation y equals zero when the numerator's degree is smaller than the denominator's degree. Now I'm talking about the largest exponent in both the numerator and the denominator here. So if the uh, numerator's largest exponent is smaller than the denominator's then the graph will always level off towards the x-axis or at the equation y equals zero. If these two are equal to one another, then the fraction created by their leading coefficients, a over b, will represent the equation of the horizontal asymptote. And finally, if the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. It won't level off at all. In the third case, and I add this when teaching this uh, traditionally, uh, there is going to be a slanted asymptote, so an oblique asymptote. This occurs when the numerator degree, the exponent on in the numerator, is one value larger or one number larger than the degree in the denominator. And we see that from time to time, so I just thought I'd share that with you right now. So let me illustrate an example here. Uh, we've got a rational function, which of course is made of a polynomial divided by another polynomial, and we have to find the asymptotes um, for this particular problem. Uh, the instructions ask us to do a little bit more, but I'm going to uh, focus on the asymptotes in this case. Well, for part number one, we said that vertical asymptotes, I'll make myself a note here, vertical asymptotes occur when there are holes in the um, denominator or when there's still a factor, or I'm sorry, a zero in the denominator. So first thing we should do is simplify this and factor. And it looks like we have x um, plus 4 times x uh, minus 1 in the numerator. And in the denominator, when factored, we're going to see x, uh, I think, plus 2 and x minus 1 in the denominator. Now here's what I mean by a factor that removes the zero that's associated with this, the value x equals one is going to produce a hole in the graph. Whereas the zero associated with this factor, which is not removed, um, is going to create a uh, vertical asymptote. So at x equals negative two, we're going to see a vertical asymptote because this was a non-removable discontinuity. This, this is a zero of the denominator after it's been factored. So right off the bat I know that the graph is going to have a vertical asymptote through x equals negative two. As far as our horizontal asymptotes go, well again let's consider the, uh, the rules if the numerator's degree is smaller than the denominator's, then we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, or the x-axis. But in this case, the numerator and the denominator have the same degree. They have the same largest exponent. So when those two are equal, according to part b, when the two degrees are equal, then we have a horizontal asymptote at the fraction created by the leading coefficients. Now the leading coefficients here are one and one, implied, not written. So that means that we have a horizontal asymptote at one divided by one, or y equals one. 
so we're going to have a horizontal asymptote on this graph right here. Now if I were to uh, create the rest of this graph, I would start using test points and try to um, establish coordinates on the graph, and that might look something like this. I'd like to choose an x value of 0 first because the math is pretty easy. When x is 0, the equation will reduce to 4 over 2, which is equal to 2. So when x is 0, I know that there's a coordinate of a y coordinate of 2 at that position. Now I could try an x value of 1, an x value of 1, but in the original equation I'm going to get an, um, an indeterminable, indeterminable result. If I uh, substitute 1 in for x here I'll get a 0 in the denominator. But I can still substitute 1 in the factored form. So we have 1 plus 4 over 1 plus 2, which is 5 over 3, which is approximately 1 and 2 thirds. Um, but let's keep in mind what's happening here when an x value is 1. We think that there's a coordinate here at 1 and 2 thirds, but that 1, since it was a hole in the original function, is going to show up as a hole in the graph. It was a discontinuity in the original function, therefore it's a hole in this graph. So even with just these two coordinates, I've got a pretty good idea of where the rest of this graph is going to appear. We are bounded by the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, so you, you can see how this branch of the graph approaches the vertical asymptote from the right, it approaches this horizontal asymptote from above, and we've got at least one branch complete. Uh, next I would pick one more test point to the left of this vertical asymptote, and we'll take a look at what happens over there. So I might choose just an x value of negative 3. And so if I have negative 3 plus 4 over negative 3 plus 2, uh, we'll see something like this, 1 over negative 1, which of course equals negative 1 itself. So when we have an x value of negative 3, we have a y value of negative 1. So that point shows up on the graph. And here again, an educated guest would, in, would indicate that uh, this graph is bounded by the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. And for this portion of the class, I think that would be a fine assumption. And we can establish what that graph would look like. Now, depending on where you are in your Khan Academy work, you might see a question that looks more like this, where the, uh, whoops, wrong page where the uh, website is simply asking you to describe the behavior of the function around the vertical asymptote at x equals 4. Well, without a calculator, we can do the type of work that I was just showing a second ago. Um, we have this um, function. I'm just going to take a screenshot of that and copy it into my notebook here. So here's this function. I would still start by factoring it. Uh, we have x plus, well, let's say uh, minus actually, x minus 7 times x minus 5. That's our uh, factored numerator and x minus 4. You'll notice that this factor didn't cancel, so therefore we know that at an x value of positive 4, since that creates a 0 in the denominator, that's where our vertical asymptote is going to be. So surrounding that, um, without a calculator, I would use just test points and might evaluate the function at, uh, say, 3. Uh, I might evaluate the function again at 5. And if we need more than that, I might pick other values that are closer to 4, but not quite 4, maybe an f value at uh, 3.5 or a function value at, um, uh, say, 4.5, because that's these are both closer to 4, but not equal to 4, than, uh, and they're closer than uh, 3 and 5 on either side. So essentially what we're doing is, is we're, we're approaching this x value of 4, and we're picking some x values closer and closer to 4, and we're going to try to see what the graphed result would be. 
But I think the um, primary focus of the Khan Academy question is to describe the behavior of the function. And I think they're assuming that you might be looking at a graph of this function because, uh, again, I think this question is really asking about the vocabulary surrounding this. So let's talk a little bit about that and we'll choose a proper answer. So <clears throat> one thing that you hopefully took away from the Khan Academy videos is this notation here is read as x approaches 4 from the left. Okay, this little minus sign after the number 4 means the left side of the number 4 on the x-axis. If we look at uh, this phrase here as x approaches 4 from the right, this plus sign means from the right. And so if we continue to read as the x values approach 4 from the left, the function values or the function results approach a positive infinity. So function values are simply just a display of the y values. So as x comes from the left hand side towards 4, uh, the y value gets closer to infinity, a positive infinity, so it gets higher up on the graph. <clears throat> as x approaches 4 from the right, the function values also approach infinity. So a look, or, or the way that might look is, is like this. It, let's say I'm trying to draw this graph. As I'm approaching this x value of 4 from the left, the function value is getting larger, so it might increase as we approach that asymptote. And as we approach this x value of 4 from the right, we again might increase towards infinity, and that's what this graph would look like. So if you're looking at your graph, um, the graph of this function and it looks like this, then I think option A would be a good choice. Of course, we can use Desmos to actually graph this function pretty quickly. And any graphing calculator uh, would work just as well. But in this case, we have um, x squared minus 12x plus 35 over x minus 4. So I took just a moment to uh, graph that here on the left-hand side. Now as I zoom out a little bit from this graph, we can see, well, uh, here's our x value of 4, whoops, right here in the center of the graph, and if we come from the right-hand side, the graph races upward towards infinity, a positive infinity. As we approach the x value of 4 from the left-hand side, as we come from the left to the right, the function dives downward towards negative infinity. So I would say something like this, that as x approaches 4 from the left, the function, the y values, approach um, negative infinity. And as x approaches 4 from the right, the function values, or the y coordinates, approach a positive infinity. And so let's see here, which option was that? On Khan Academy, it looks like uh, as we approach from the left, negative infinity. As we approach 4 from the right, positive infinity. I think option B is a good choice. And if we check the answer, it looks like we've got that one correct. Um, and just to wrap up this video, because it's getting quite lengthy right now, I just want to point something out here. This numerator's degree is one larger than the denominator's degree. So since this value is bigger than this value by exactly one, uh, then when we take a look at the graph, uh, we should see a slanted asymptote. And if I, if I zoom out or if I adjust this zoom here, you can pretty clearly see that there is a slanted line a slanted asymptote that this graph would approach. That only happens when the numerator's degree is one larger than the denominator, as we indicated here in step number three. So hopefully this video helps. I know I had to cover a couple different topics uh, within the, the single video, but again, uh, this was designed to supplement both our uh, general understanding of the graphs as well as the performance on that particular math, I'm sorry, that particular Khan Academy assignment. If you need some more clarification, please let me know.